Good morning students. So we are passing through the lesson actually the organ and organ system in animals. So in this chapter we have discussed regarding this previous classes we have discussed about these two invertebrates that is one is the setum and another one is the cockroach fine. And today's class we have to talk about one of this vertebrate right and that is the frog and its scientific name is rana hexadactyla right. So first we can look into this classification of this frog first okay. So let us see. So since it is one of the vertebrate, it belongs to the phylum Chordata, right? And class amphibians and order is Aruna and its genus is Rana and the species is Hexadactyla. Okay. And so this Aruna, actually they said overall, overall amphibian consists of 4,500 species. This amphibian consists of 4,500 species. Among this, 3,900 species belongs to this group or, or we can say it's the order Aruna. So the lot of species is belongs to this order Aruna. Have you got? And which includes this frogs. Eh? So this frogs and toads includes this order Aruna. So today's class we have to elaborately talk about this. You know morphological as well as this anatomical feature of this. You know frog and its scientific name is of course Rana and Hexadactyla. Understand? Okay. So, its habitats, you know, a frog, it's used to live inside this, and you know, freshwater regions, and especially we consider, you know, you know ponds, and uh, the streams, and lakes, and wetlands, and so on, right? And its food habit, we can say it used to eat this insect, in the small fishes, and the worms, and this, you know, uh, snails, so those things, it eats food, it's food it used to eat, right? Okay, and this and it's one of this poikilothermic animal. Do you remember what is poikilothermic? It is one of this poikilothermic animal. So what do you mean poikilothermic? So poikilothermic means and it used to change its body temperature as per this environmental changes. Have you got? So it, it used to change, it could able to change its own internal environment, body temperature. As for the external environment, so that is called as poikilothermic animals. Have we got? Okay. So this is some general features we said about this, you know, frog. And first we can go for this morphological features. Morphology means, what do you mean morphology? The external feature of this, you know, animal is called morphology, right? So first let us look into this morphology. Of course, the frog is one of this very familiar animal and we used to see it in our day-to-day -day life, right? And of course, uh, you may learn about this morphological features in this lower classes also. So, hope it is very easy to pick up, right? Okay, first we can see. So, of course, uh, the body shape, this is a streamlined body, right? It is adaptable for swimming. So, it is a streamlined body. The body shape is streamlined. And its uh, color of this color of this body is a dark greenish in color. So, the dorsal view, we could say it's a dark greenish in color. And the ventral view is pale color, pale green. So, dorsal side is dark green and the ventral side is pale green right okay and the skin the body is fully covered with the skin of course we know the skin is very smooth and soft right and moist and very slim so such a very slim uh, moist skin is covering throughout the body right okay and we can come to the body part so the body part is divided into two regions okay so overall we can divide it into two regions the first one is the head region and the second region is the trunk region. Head and trunk region. Okay. So first we can look into this. What are these regions is present in this head region? Of course it is very simple. So if you see this head region. The head they said almost it is triangular in shape. Right. Almost triangular in shape. So this is since it is triangular in shape. So this front anterior end. This is anterior end. This is posterior end. Right. Anterior region. This is posterior region. This is dorsal V and this is ventral side. Right. So this anterior region we could say it is forming as a snout. So this apex, since it is a triangular in shape, so this end we could say as an apex for the end or this end is forming as a snout of this head region, right? Okay, and this consists of, in this anterior end it consists of wide mouth. It consists of what? Wide mouth. Then, and just behind or just posterior or just behind this mouth, it consists of the pair of nostrils, external nostrils, right? So pair of nostrils, so each one is located in either side of this mid-dorsal line. Can you watch the mid-dorsal line? So this is the mid-dorsal line. 
so it is dividing the spotty parts into two partitions you could see so each nostril is located in either side of this mid dorsal line right and behind this nostrils what will be there there's a large eye is there right so this eye is protruded out you know it is you know it could be very prominent it will be very visible one right so it is um, protruded out above, above you know above this body surface we could say and this eye consists of this uh, three protective membranes or eyelids so upper eyelid as well as the lower eyelid the upper eyelid is immobile type immobile it don't move at all but the lower eyelid is movable movable type lower eyelid alone is to move right and it consists of another one membrane it's a special membrane this present here it is called nictitating membrane nictitating membrane right so this nictitating membrane does a purpose is when this you know animal is inside this water this nictitating membrane is protecting this so that is the role of this uh, nictitating membrane right so uh, behind this behind this eye okay behind this eye consists of this tympanic membrane or tympanum or tympanic membrane is there so this function is air drum like us right so we have the external ear but in case of this frog there is the absence of external ear but it consists of this tympanum or tympanic membrane pair of tympanic membrane is there of course like this nostril this is also present in either side of this nest dorsal line in both sides okay and i also pair of eyes right so this is the regions which is present in this head region okay so head region consists of this mouth part wide mouth it is widely open type plus it consists of this nostrils and the eye as well as system panic membrane so these are the parts is present in the head region have you got okay and nostrils and it did uh, membrane eye and the tympanum and the mouth okay this now consists of mouth right and let us pass to the next uh, part that is trunk region okay and can you watch there is no uh, neck between this head region and the trunk region head is directly connected with this trunk region there is no separate neck okay and there is no tail also there is no external ear have you got okay let us see about this trunk region the trunk region bears is two pair of this limbs it is well visible two pair of limbs are there four limb pair of four limb as well as a pair of hind limb right at the end of this hind limb in the central region at the posterior region it consists of this opening that opening is called cloacal aperture cloacal aperture right it is at the posterior end between this hind limb right and the cloacal aperture is there it purpose is it is useful to eliminate or this send out this you know excretory waste digestive waste as well as it is used for the reproductive to send this uh, sperm and this you know ovum so understand it is useful for reproduction pattern also so for three purpose this the same cloacal aperture will be used have we got okay and now we can come to the limbs so two pair of limb is there of course the first limb is the four limb and this back side limb is this hind limb so the four limb is short and stubby short and stubby understand and its purpose is it is useful it is bearing this body weight so the total body weight is bared by this and uh, four limb this four limb and they say this is useful to uh, for landing the body after leaping it used to leap right it used to jump so after leaping the body has to land so this four limb is useful to landing of this body right so uh, that is a, that is the purpose of this four limb right actually four limb is short and stubby but the hind limb is long and along and it is a lengthiest one understand okay and this consists of the three divisions either four limb or hind limb it consists of three divisions the division is it is upper arm first one is upper arm and the second division is fore arm and the hand hand right upper arm fore arm as well as this hand so the hand again the hand consists of this four digits hand consists of four digits okay so there is about this four limb and we come to the hind limb the, as we said the hind limb is long and lengthiest one right and this also divided as a three digits three divisions the first one is a thigh the first one is a thigh and sham second division is a sham and the third division is the foot okay so thigh sham as well as the foot so this foot consists of again 
five digits. Here four digit, but here five digits along with the verb. So there is no verb here, but here can you watch here the verb each digit is connected with each other with the help of this web. This is called web. Oh, sorry, I have marked here. So it says web, right? So it consists of the five digits. Along with that, they say one more or spot is there connected along with this one. That is you know, that is considered as the sixth toe. So this is the toe. So this digits we can call as a toe, right? Five toe is web to toe is there, and one additional spot also there that is considered as the sixth toe. Understand? So overall. You know, over a 6 plus 4, 5, the 6 plus 4, 10 digit is there. Okay, so that's all about this you know, morphological features. So the body is divided into two regions, head and trunk. So head region we said, what are the parts in the head region and what are the regions in this, you know, trunk region. Okay, then you know, let us move to this, you know, anatomical part of this, prana hexadactyla. Fine. So let us go for this anatomical part. So in that, the first one is this digestive system. Fine. Okay. So, let us the digestive system. The digestive system consists of this long alimentary canal, right? So, since it begins from this mouth and it ends with this cloacal aperture. So, the alimentary canal begins with this mouth and it ends with this cloacal aperture. So, on the way we could say, as so a mouth will open into this buccal cavity and the buccal cavity leads to this pharynx region. Pharynx leads to this short tube that is known as esophagus. Esophagus leads to stomach and the stomach leads to the intestine. So intestine is a long intestine and it is divided into two regions. One is this duodenum and the beginning part of this intestine is known as duodenum and this the rest of this region is known as ileum. So there is a two regions of this intestine. Okay. So the intestine ends with this rectum and the rectum opens as this cloacal aperture. Okay. And along with that it consists of this glands also so this gland is helping for this digestion of this food so the two glands is associated with this digestive system that is known as the liver as well as the pancreas okay so now let this is this regions which is present in this digestive system and let us go for this how it begins okay so listen so the digestive system of the alimentary canal begins with the mouth so already we said it's considered of the large mouth and it's wide it could open widely right and it consists of this upper jaw as well as the lower jaw, right? And upper jaw consists of this small pointed teeth. Upper jaw, cons upper jaw alone consists of the small pointed teeth. That teeth is known as, as maxillary teeth. The teeth is known as, as maxillary teeth. Okay. In addition, there is no teeth in this lower jaw. So it is devoid of teeth. They said there is no teeth in this lower jaw. And uh, maxillary teeth is present in the upper jaw. In addition, this is, this is a group of vomerine teeth. That is known as vomerine teeth. This is present in either side of this nostrils. Understand? Either side of this nostrils. There is additional teeth present. In, uh, but I have marked here. It is present on, in this either side of this nostrils. It is present in either side of this nostrils. Understand? Okay. Then... So, and the, then we can come. So, mouth is widely openable type and the mouth leads, this, and the, leads to the buccal cavity, right? And the buccal cavity consists of, the floor of this buccal cavity consists of long and muscular sticky tongue. Long and muscular and the sticky tongue. And this tongue is sticky in nature because it could easily, when it captures the seam side, it is easily stick on this tongue. That's why this is the sticky tongue and the long tongue. You know, easily it could widely spread this tongue, right? And the sticky tongue and this tongue is, you know, attached in the front and the back it is free. The front region it is attached in the floor of this buccal cavity, but the back end is free. Understand? Okay. So, when it sides any insides or any, any its uh, food, it used to, you know, flick out this, its tongue outside. Since it is very sticky, easily this, you know, insect, anything, it may attach on this tongue. So, it will be thrown into the mouth and the mouth will be closed. Understand? This is the way it is to capture this, you know, prey or food, right? And it has taken the food into the mouth, right? Then, then with the help of the teeth, it will be grinded. Then it is passing through the pharynx region. It is coming to this next short tube that is known as the esophagus. Esophagus is passing the food to the stomach region. Okay. So in the stomach, there is there. So the stomach region. The stomach is secreting this hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric. Hydro. 
hydrochloric acid as well as the gastric juices gastric juices so the stomach is secreting the hydrochloric acid as well as the gastric juices inside this wall of this you know wall of the stomach is secreting the hydrochloric acid as well as the gastric juices this is helpful for for digestion of this food right so after this digestion the partially digested food from the stomach so listen from the mouth the food is passed to the stomach understand the stomach is secreting the two secretions what are the two secretions hydrochloric acid as well as the gastric juices which is secreted from the wall of the stomach right so this secretion is helpful for the digestion of the food now so the not completely digested partially digested so the partially digested food in the stomach is known as as you know chyme so this is the partially digested food inside the stomach so this chyme is transported to the next region that is called as intestine so the intestine is divided into two regions the beginning part where it is connected with the stomach is known as a duodenum and this in rest of this region is known as a cilium okay so the chyme is now passed towards this duodenum region have you got and in the duodenum region the duodenum part is connected with the two largest glands the largest glands are one is this liver another one is this pancreas so this is a liver as well as the pancreas okay so listen first we could say as a liver so liver is the largest gland and this liver is secreting the bile juice so liver is secreting bile juice and this bile juice after secretion is stored inside this one one of a you know, pouch like structure is there inside right that is known as a gall bladder gall bladder so it's a small pouch like structure which is present inside this liver so the liver is secreting this bile juice so this bile juice will be stored inside this gall bladder have we got okay then then the next region is known as the pancreas right the pancreas listen the pancreas the next part is the pancreas pancreas the pancreas is secreting pancreatic juice pancreatic juice okay pancreatic juice so the liver is secreting the bile juice meanwhile this pancreas is secreting the pancreatic juice and liver secretion is stored inside this gall bladder afterwards it is left into this so this bile secretion also coming here right meanwhile this pancreatic secretion also coming through this pancreatic duct so both will connect each other here then it is coming out as a common bile duct because pancreatic duct as well as this bile duct or liver duct both will connect each other here so in, here in this duodenum part it is connecting as a single duct single duct common bile duct we could say common bile duct is a single duct it coming as a single duct have you got me okay then then after coming here they said already who, who is a chyme is a partially digested food chyme is there in this intestine right so then with the help of this bile juice and the pancreatic juice the rest of this digestion is going on in this intestine already okay then they say this bile juice is useful to for the digestion of this fat emulsification fat emulsification means fat is actually it is a complex molecule fat is a complex molecule so this will be emulsified other process is known as emulsification which means the complex molecule of the fat will be uh, converted as a simplest molecules that it will be converted or it will be convert or diverted as the smallest pieces or smallest molecules that process is known as emulsification right so that is done with the help of this bile juice so the bile juice is going for this you know fat emulsification okay and pancreatic juice is you know digesting this carbohydrate carbohydrate protein so carbohydrate protein and the lipid carbohydrate protein and the lipid so these things will be digested by the help of this pancreatic juice right so the final digestion is going on in this intestinal region after digestion it will be converted as this glucose and this amino acids and this will you know fatty acid and so on right so this will be converted it in its own simplest molecules okay then the finally digested or the simplest molecule will be absorbed in this intestinal region so the intestinal region consists of this you know, small and you know, minute finger like projections that is known as as villi so this known as as villi so this villi will absorb this digested you know nutrients 
and it will pass it to over this, it will send it to the circulation. It has to transfer throughout the body, right? So it will pass it to the circulation. So the undigested or the waste materials will come to the rectum region, right? And from the rectum, it will reach to the cloacal aperture. Through the cloacal aperture, this digested waste will be eliminated. Have you got? So that's all about this digestive system of this frog. Understand? So listen. So it starts from the mouth and, with the, and the cloacal aperture. On the way, it comes to the two major glands that is the liver and pancreas. Liver is secreting the bile juice. Meanwhile, the pancreas is secreting the pancreatic juice, right? And liver uh, bile juice is used for this fat emulsification. Largest fat molecules will be converted in the simplest molecules. Meanwhile, this pancreatic juice is converting the carbohydrate, protein, and the lipid in its own simplest molecules. After digestion, it will be absorbed by this villi and digested waste or this waste uh, digested. A process uh, materials will be coming out through this cloacal approach. Okay, so that's all about this digestive system. Fine. So let us talk about the next system. It is this respiratory system. Okay, so there is here the respiratory system is since a frog is one of the amphibians, it used to living inside this water as well as on the land. That's why it is using the various organs for its respiratory process. Okay, so let us see one by one. So the first one they said it is for gills. The respiratory organ is gills. Suppose we know and the frog says uh, larval stage is tadpole larva. The tadpole larva it used to live in completely inside this water. That's why during the stage it used to get these gills like a fissures and it used to you know uh, breathe with the help of these gills. When it is in the subquatic region and especially it is in, during this larval stage. Have you got? Okay. And the second one is this, you know, cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous. Cutaneous respiration. So cutaneous respiration means in the help with the help of this skin. So the respiration takes place with the help of the skin. That is known as a cutaneous respiration. So skin also one of the respiratory organs for the amphibians. So listen, when this frog is inside this water. The so water consists of this dissolved oxygen. The oxygen will be dissolved in the water. So this water will move inside this, you know, skin. So through the skin, this exchange of gases takes place by diffusion method. So the oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange is going on through the skin by diffusion method. So when when this animal is inside this water, okay. So there is one of this uh, method. This we can say cutaneous respiration with the help of the skin. And so this is going on normally when the when the animal is inside this water. Plus, they say during estivation as well as during the when it is inside the water as well as estivation, estivation as well as hibernation. Hibernation. Have you heard this word? Do you remember? Estivation as well as hibernation. Estivation is this in a summer sleep and hibernation is this winter sleep. So during you know, uh, you know extreme climatic conditions, for example, too cold or too hot, that is we can say this in these three times. Uh, it used to take rest. It don't do any function. It is under the rest. So that is known as a say, estivation as well as a hibernation. So estivation is a summer sleep and the hibernation is a winter sleep. So by the time it, use, it, it has to use its skin for its respiration. So that is known as a cutaneous respiration. It is the second method of respiration. Okay. And the third method of respiration is buccal respiration. Buccal respiration. So buccal respiration is of course with the help of this buccal cavity it used to respire and uh, uh, when it is on the land, when it is on the land, when the animal is on the land it, it, it will use its buccal cavity for respiration. So when it is on the land they say the mouth part will be completely closed. So the nostrils will be open, right. So listen, so when the nostrils will be open, so this part we could say this is a buccal region, right. So here this uh, buccal region, this part will open the pharynx next we say. So the space between this pharynx and the buccal region which this we could say is this buccopharyngeal region. Buccopharyngeal region. Okay. So in this part there is a gap. There is a space. Cavity will be there. So when the mouth is closed, mouth is closed behind this mouth, this nostrils will be there, right? So the nostrils will be there. And they say, behind the nostrils, the nostrils will be there. And when the mouth is closed, the air is moving through these nostrils. 
so it will reach the buccal cavity so how it will reach uh, to the buccal cavity the sensor is on so when the body is at rest when it is on the land this buccal cavity will move up and down or rise and lower alternatively right so listen when it lower and the space will increase so the air is drawn into this into the cavity through the nostrils right and when it rise the space will reduce so the air will come out through this nostrils so by th this is going on alternatively it will rise and lower so by this process the respiration is going on that is known as a speckle respiration this is going on when this animal is on the land understand and the third method we could say and the fourth method we could say as pulmonary respiration pulmonary respiration pulmonary respiration of course we know this respiration is going on with the help of this lungs with the help of this lungs and the lungs also they say that is a the lungs consist of this, you know, bronchi, and the bronchi will divide. The bronchial tube will divide. Okay, the bronchial tube will divide, and it is enclosed with this pinkish elongated, pinkish elongated lungs. Okay, and fully it is filled with this alveoli. This cycle, the structure is not given, even though the simple structure we could draw, but it fully it is filled with this alveoli. It's not like a human lungs. Human lung consists of trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, okay, and the divisions will be there, then it is filled with this air sac that is known as a salvioli. But not like this, here is a bronchi, bronchi division will be there, and finally it is enclosed with this lungs. So elongated, pink color, these two pair of lungs will be there in this upper thoracic region, right. And so here how it will get this air, when this, you know, the air is moving through this nostrils, then it will reach to the buccal cavity, from the buccal cavity it has been sent to this, you know, lungs region. Okay, so through this it is to respect. That is known as, you know, pulmonary respiration. So there is a four method of respiratory method is going on in this frog. Since it is living inside this water as well as on land. Understand? So let us go for the next system. It is this blood vascular system. So blood and vascular system. So here, for frog already we have said it is a closed type of this circulatory system is seen. So since it is a closed type, so closed type circulatory system, closed type. So what do you mean closed type? So this blood is moving inside the blood vessels. Those type is called as a closed type. So here we could say it consists of the heart and it consists of this blood vessels and it consists of the blood. So those type of circulation we used to see it's this closed type of circulatory system. Understand? Okay. So first let us see about this structure of this, you know, heart. So the heart consists of actually three chambers. So it consists of three chambers. <clears throat> it consists of three chambers, right? So that is, and I hope you may learn it in the lower classes also regarding this heart of this frog and this uh, human beings. Of course, here you go, listen. So in this anterior side, so this is the anterior region and this is the posterior region, right? So the anterior side, it consists of these two chambers. That is known as this auricle, right? So he, this we can name as this, these two chambers we can name as right auricle as well as the left auricle, fine? So, right auricle as well as left auricle. Okay. And so, this is the, you know, thin wall. So, thin wall anterior chamber is known as this auricle. Okay. And the posterior chamber it is one of the single chamber and it's a thick wall chamber. So, that chamber is known as this ventricle. So, two auricle and one ventricle is there. Have we got? Okay. Then we could say this. Huh? And uh, this is the major chambers or primary chambers we could say. Along with this, some accessory chamber also there, like a chambers, accessory chambers are there. So that is, if you see dorsal V, for example, we could say it's a dorsal, you know, dorsal V. So this is a dorsal V. So if you see the dorsal V, in this dorsal side, there is it, it consists of this one sinus, another one chamber. It's a triangular shape, triangular shape chamber that is known as a sinus venosus. Sinus venosus. That is present in the dorsal side of this heart. Okay. Meanwhile, in the ventral side, in the back side, in the ventral side of the heart consists of another one chamber that is known as such. Actually, it is arising from the ventricle. It is arising from the ventricle. I, I, if I have drawn, since I have drawn this dorsal wave here, this part I have mentioned as the strongest arteriosus. But it is in the ventral wave. Have you got me? Ventral side, it is arising from this ventricle region. Understand? Okay, so that is known as a strongest arteriosus. 
So the three major chamber is right auricle, left auricle, as well as this ventricle. But the accessory chambers is associated along with this. That is first one is the sinus venosus. It is present in the dorsal side. And the ventral side it consists of this. This is large chamber V shape or a triangular shape chamber. But this is a tubular chamber. Have you got tubular chamber? It is obliquely present. It is in the side wise, obliquely present. That is known as the strongest arteriosus. Okay. Now listen. So first we can say about this uh, and the structure and we can go how it functions. Listen. So first of all, the heart is receiving the deoxygenated blood. So unpure blood that is known as a deoxygenated blood from every parts of this body. Okay. And from the heart, the blood will be supplied to the lungs for purification and it is supplied to the body parts also. Understand? First it is collecting the deoxygenated blood and it is coming towards his heart. Okay. And from the heart, part of this blood is going towards his lungs for purification. What do you mean purification? So since it is deoxygenated blood, it consists of a lot of carbon dioxide, right? So this carbon dioxide has to send to the lungs and from the lungs it will receive this oxygenated blood. Understand? So that's why they said from this ventricle, part of this blood is going towards his lungs for purification and part of the blood is going towards his and uh, throughout the body for oxygen supply. Okay, in human respiratory, uh, sorry, circulatory system, we consist of this, the two auricle as well as the true ventricle, right? Here in the ventricle, oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood do not mix together because there is a partition in the center. Understand? But here they say there is no partition, it is not separated each other. That's why, and the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood which is coming from this auricle will mix in this ventricle region. So when we supply, it is not supplying the pure oxygenated blood. Actually, it will supply this oxygen mixer blood, oxygenated and this carbon dioxide. Both will be there. Have we got? Okay, first we can listen. So first of all, it is receiving the blood. So first we can say when how it is receiving the blood. So as we said, this is the largest chamber which is present in the dorsal side is known as the sinus venosus, right? So this sinus venosus is collecting this deoxygenated blood. So deoxygenated blood. Okay, this deoxygenated blood will be collected from everywhere, from throughout the body by the sinus venosus with the help of these veins. This chamber is here, right? So, of course, it has to collect with the help of these veins. The blood will be collected with the help of these veins. So, the major veins which is connected with this chamber is known as two precaval veins. So, one, two. So, two precaval veins. So, precaval veins are two as well as one postcaval vein. The postcaval vein is one. So this vein is collecting this deoxygenated blood everywhere and it is bringing towards the sinus venosus. This sinus venosus will leave this deoxygenated blood into this right auricle. So the, from here, this right auricle receiving this deoxygenated blood. Are you following me? So this is collecting, sinus venosus is collecting the deoxygenated blood. After collecting, this is helping for collection. It is bringing from uh, throughout the body, right? After collecting, this leaving the blood into this right auricle. So right auricle is receiving this deoxygenated blood. Meanwhile, left auricle is receiving the oxygenated blood. How is that? So, listen. So, right auricle is receiving this deoxygenated blood right here. Then, when the auricle can't die, the both the bloods will come here. From here also it will come. From here also it will come. Okay. Both the bloods will mix in this ventricle now. Right. From the ventricle, one already I, we said in the ventral region, what we say, one of the one of the chamber we said that is known as the strongest arteriosus. Have we got Trungus arteriosus is there. This trungus arteriosus will branch here. The trungus arteriosus will branch here. Branch as this aortic trunk. Branch as aortic trunk. So this, since it is branching into two, they named it as this right aortic trunk as well as the left aortic trunk. Are you following me? So for sinus venosus is collecting the deoxygenated blood. It is left in this right auricle. Okay. Then I will say how which blood will be received in this left auricle. Okay, follow me. Then, when this auricle contract, the blood is coming here. From here, this trungus arteriosus is taking the blood. Understand? Taking the blood. And it is dividing into two. As this aortic trunk. Right aortic trunk as well as the left aortic trunk. Okay. Then, this right and left, both aortic trunk, again further divided as three branches. Have you got? Further divided as three branches. That branches are, one is this carotid trunk. Another one is a systemic trunk. Another one is a palmocutaneous trunk. Have you got this aortic trunk? Right and left aortic trunk. Again further divided into three divisions. One is this carotid trunk. Carotid trunk. 
and the second one is the systemic trunk third one is the palmocutaneous trunk trunk okay then listen so here this carotid trunk will supply so it is bringing the blood from here right it is supplying the blood to anterior part of this body so here to and the head region the anterior part of this body okay second one systemic trunk so this systemic trunk and this systemic trunk from the left and right side will connect actually it will coming downwards it is moving towards this anterior region have you got anterior region in the systemic trunk both the sides it is coming downwards in the posterior region where it will connect it will connect as this aortic trunk it will connect as aortic trunk this will connect as a aortic trunk aortic trunk in the back or posterior region it will connect as aortic trunk and it will supply the blood to this you know uh, posterior region this carotid trunk is supplying to anterior region systemic trunk is supplying to the posterior region have you got and the third one is a pulmonary palmocutaneous trunk palmocutaneous trunk what do you mean the word palmo which means the lungs cutaneous means already we said skin right so this one is bringing the blood to this Uh, lungs as well as to the skin okay so the part of this part of this blood is taken to the lungs now so in the lungs what will happen the exchange will happen so lungs already it is received the oxygen so here oxygen along with the carbon dioxide is there so that it will leave this carbon dioxide and it will receive this oxygen so much of oxygen will be there compared with the carbon dioxide because it is leaving the carbon dioxide and receiving the oxygen right so this uh, oxygen amount will be more than this carbon dioxide so that blood will come towards this left auricle have you got me now so that blood will come towards this left auricle now understand so this vein is known as now pulmonary vein pulmonary vein do you understand so this pulmonary vein is bringing the oxygenated blood now where from it is coming from the lungs so it will leave this oxygenated blood now here so is that right auricle is receiving this carbon uh, dioxinated blood meanwhile left auricle is receiving the oxygenated blood now we can come to the point overall we can say lizard so heart lizard heart is here right auricle left auricle ventricle have you got and the heart is receiving the first of all it is receiving the dioxinated blood who is receiving the dioxinated blood sinus venosus with the help of this three cavity as well as the post cavity okay after collecting it is leaving it into this right auricle okay meanwhile this is received the blood from the pulmonary vein through the pulmonary vein left auricle has received the oxygenated blood okay so both is pumping now when it pump both the blood is mixed here so carbon dioxide blood as well as oxygenated blood both blood will be mixed here now okay now this ventricle is contracting when the ventricle contract the blood is divided into three divisions right so this who is taking the blood here now it's the strongest arteriosus is collecting the blood this is dividing as right aortic arc as well as our left aortic trunk then this is further dividing as carotid systemic as well as the palmocutaneous and carotid is supplying to the anterior region systemic region is supplying to the posterior region palmo palmocutaneous tree is uh, uh, trunk is taking to the lungs and to the skin understand and one more point this overall we can say this heart is covered with this pericardial membrane Okay, so all about the structure and the functions of this heart. I have one more thing we have to say that is about this, you know, blood. So the blood consists of this, a plasma as well as this blood cells. Okay, plasma, plasma and blood cells. Plasma as well as the blood cells will be there. Plasma is sixty percent age. Plasma is sixty percent age, and the blood cell is forty percent age. This is sixty percent age, and this is forty percent age. Blood cells are of course the same RBC, WBC, as well as platelets. RBC, WBC, as well as platelets. So RBC for human being blood, we could say it's a respiratory pigment hemoglobin is there, the same here also. But in uh, for human being, it's a subclad biconcave and non-nucleated cells. But in case of here, it is elongated structure and it's a nucleated cell. WBC also nucleated cells. Understand? So there is a difference in human beings and for this frog here. So for human beings, RBC there is no nucleus, but uh, in for uh, frog, the RBC nucleus will be there. Okay. So that's all about this blood vascular system. Okay. So just go through these topics, and I will meet you with this next systems in this next class. Right. Fine. Thank you.